Try Accept blocks provide a powerful way of handling exceptions in your programs. To appreciate their flexibility, it's important to understand the propagation mechanism of exceptions as they occur within functions. As a general rule, an exception, whether it's spontaneous or explicitly generated with a raised keyword, is propagated up the call tree toward its root until the current function call appears inside of a try except block that intercepts that exception. If the exception propagates all the way to the main program without it ever being intercepted by any try except block on its way, only then the main program is terminated with the standard error message studied earlier. For example, consider the following call tree in which the main program invokes function A, which in turn invokes function B, which in turn invokes function C. Let's assume that a statement in function C causes an exception and that there is no try except block in this function to take care of it. Python then exits the function immediately and propagates the exception toward function B. Now it's up to function B to decide what to do with that exception. If the call to function C happened within a try except block, the exception may be captured and handled at will. But if such block is not present in function B, the exception continues to propagate toward function A. Once again, function A has the option to capture it or let it go. In the absence of a try except block within function A, the exception will continue to propagate to the main program. And this is our last chance to handle the error. If we fail to include the call to function A within a try except block at this point, Python will terminate the execution of our program with an error message containing information about the exception. Let's look at a concrete example to illustrate the propagation of exceptions. The following code includes two functions and a main program. Function divide accepts two input arguments, calculates their division, and returns the result. As you know, depending on the combination of values passed in the arguments, the first line of code in the body of this function is susceptible of causing an exception. Another function called print division also takes two input operands. It calculates their division by invoking function divide and prints the result into the terminal. Finally, our main program reads two input operands from the user, converts them into integers, and prints their division by invoking function print division. Let's run this program and enter a combination of values that intentionally causes a division by zero exception. When asked for the first operand, I'll enter 5. And when asked for the second, I'll enter 0. In its current form, neither the main program nor any of the involved functions include any error handling code. Therefore, the exception causes the program to immediately end with the error message shown here. Let's take a moment to analyze this error message. Specifically, let's pay attention to the top traceback section. Here you can see a detailed description of the sequence of function calls that led to the line of code raising the exception, according to the current state of the call tree. First, you see that the main program called function print division in line 12. Then function print division called function divide in line 6. Finally, function divide is ultimately responsible for the error caused by the division operation executed in line 2. Notice how useful this error output is. These seemingly cryptic error messages provide actually valuable insight when it comes to identifying and debugging unexpected exceptions in your program. If you enjoyed this content, you may watch the rest of this lesson at computersciencecam.com, linked in the description below. You'll be able to follow along with coding samples and problems in our embedded code editor. Drop your questions in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe to help support the channel. Thank you and happy coding!